Hello and welcome to the Quest on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Rakhi Bakshi. In this show, we keep talking to leading personalities every week, and the guest with us this week is the Assistant Secretary General of the United Nations, also the Deputy Executive Director of UN Women, Miss Lakshmi Puri. Welcome to the show, ma'am. It's a privilege to have you here. Pleasure to be here. <laughs> We're talking at a time when gender issues are really a matter of huge concern. Uh, we'll be talking about many issues, but first of all. How do you think in today's era, today's decade, it's being taken up? You are absolutely right. Globally, and not only in India, globally, gender equality, women's empowerment, and women's rights is becoming a central issue. I would not say only of concern, because that's taking a negative spin on something that is perhaps the biggest project for humanity in this century. So this is an issue that is now being recognized mm -hmm. as the single most important mm -hmm. enabler and beneficiary of sustainable development, mm -hmm. of peace and security, and of societies free of violence for human rights of everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, also, so, you're talking about so mainstreaming really, the issue, ma'am, not in isolation as, let's say, some time back it was being seen as. Absolutely. And so, you know, when you talk about concerns about gender equality, there is this whole thing of inequality, discrimination, um, violence, which is one of the worst manifestations of that inequality and discrimination. And then on the positive side, you have the agency and role of women being tapped and enabled so that they can contribute not only to the family, to the community, but to nation building and, and to, as I said, development, peace, security and human so what rights. What do you think are the measures that should be there to make them a huge part, a positive part of this whole global development. I mean, something, a roadmap that you're working on, actually. In fact, UN Women's creation was itself a signal by the international community of prioritizing gender equality and women's empowerment as, as I said, an enabler and beneficiary of all of these things, which are the priorities of humanity in this century, right? Mm -hmm. Which is to have poverty eradication, to have economic growth, uh, social development, environmental sustainability. All of these things you cannot achieve unless you empower women. And when you say empower women, what do you mean? Mm. You mean, and I have been even in the Indian context yeah. talking of and I think we can reflect very, very clearly with what Prime Minister Modi has been saying, what Arun Jetli said in his uh, budget speech. We have been talking about samman, mm. the dignity, integrity, and the very quintessence mm. of women's <coughs> autonomy mm. and, and free choice. So that is one part, that mm. samman part, that respect part, and dignity part is very you important. You think the new government is really very serious about it, ma'am, now that we have the new government here? There is, I, I, I do think that they have shown every intention so far to be uh, serious about it, to really prioritize it. Mm. And the people have spoken too. People in the survey that was done, I'm told, after this uh, government came, um, a, a survey was done and people were asked, what do you think are the most important things that you expect this government to deliver on? Mm. And number two in that list was that they wanted the government to, do, to deliver on women's rights and, and gender equality and ending violence against women. But we're talking so, again so, about a time so. in India, ma'am, where we have seen, uh, you know, this whole outrage and protest on Absolutely. the streets. In fact, there's so much anger uh, within not only women, but yes. all across the society, yes. um, especially uh, taking a cue from 16 December's case. So how would you look at this time uh, in India that we're talking about? I think 
the issue of violence against women has, as you said, gained prominence due to all the tragic, terrible, inexcusable cases that unconscionable cases that have been taking place every day. And of course, it's not unique to India. It's happening all over the world. And the whole issue of violence, however, and the public outrage that that creates has to be tapped to do two things. And this is what we are advocating here as UN Women. One, to have a concerted action against violence that women are subjected to, to have, and these, this concerted action should address four key areas. One is prevention. It's not enough just to talk about safety mm. and, and to talk about violence against women as a criminal activity. We have to look at it more holistically and we have to address what we call the four P's of ending violence against women. One is prevention. Prevention involves, as the government also is recognizing and Arun Jetli said so in his speech, Prevention involves teaching right from the time you are in kindergarten mm. that women, girls and boys, women and men are equal, that they have to be treated with mutual respect, that you know any form of discrimination is not acceptable, zero tolerance on violence has to be inculcated right from the beginning. And at all levels, in the family, in the community, special campaigns, all of that is part of prevention. But also linked to this whole violence issue mm. is the whole issue of gender inequality and discrimination on which violence arises. So addressing that part in the prevention. And, are you and then if, mm. I, if I may just, and then the second part is protection. What are law enforcement measures mm. that need to be taken mm. Uh, in terms of protecting mm. women. And that is about gender sensitive infrastructure. We have the Safe Cities program and, and safety audits for women of, of the city's infrastructure in the rural areas. How is this operating? So that is the protection part. The third part, how to make the whole you know, law enforcement uh, in, say, infrastructure gender sensitive. Mm. Third part is prosecution of perpetrators and access to justice for victims and survivors. Mm -hmm. And the fourth part is to have these multi-sectoral uh, one-stop crisis centers mm -hmm. that women can go to, victims and survivors can have access to and feel confident that they can go to and, and get uh, both support, redress, and long term even You've really support. explained it well, but the so, last mile, the last stop, do you yeah. think laws are there, but they are really being implemented? I mean, that's the concern that we generally have here. So in absolutely. So you are absolutely right that for these four P's to be in place, you of course need the right kind of legislation, ending discriminatory laws and enacting laws. So we in, in India, you have now in place very good laws but we need to implement them. And what do we mean by implementation? So you have to have the right kind of institutions mm -hmm. in place. You have to have the right kind of investment. So the Nirbhaya Fund and other resources have to be actually deployed now. Mm -hmm. Then you have to have also the kind of engagement of civil society. It's very important that this should be uh, engaging civil society. You, mu you must have monitoring and constant monitoring and evaluation uh, of the institutions that you set up so that, you know, we have quality control. And UN Women is very happy to support all of that. We have, ex we have been working with the government even in t from the normative side, but we are also happy to work on the implementation side. And we need to also invest as i said investment is key so there's so many other issues that we of course uh, will talk about in the next segment but right now we are taking a very short break you are watching the quest and we are talking to miss lakshmi puri don't go away 
वेलकम बैक टू द शो यू आर वाचिंग द क्वेस्ट वी आर इन कॉन्वर्सेशन विद मिस लक्ष्मी पुरी टॉकिंग अबाउट एमडीजी एंड दिस इज वेयर वी फेल्ट अ लिटिल डिसअपॉइंटेड दैट इट डिड नॉट रियली टैकल जेंडर डिस्पैरिटी इन सच ग्रेट डिटेल एट इट एज इट शुड हैव यू आर एब्सोल्युटली राइट वी वर डिसअपॉइंटेड टू इन फैक्ट दिस टाइम व्हेन द कमीशन ऑन स्टेटस ऑफ वुमेन मेट यूएन वुमेन प्रिपेयर्ड अ फर्स्ट एवर एनालिसिस ऑफ द इंपैक्ट of and the significance of the millennium development girl, uh, uh, goals for women and girls and it found mm. that first of all the goals were not comprehensive or transformative enough okay. they did not have gender equality and women's empowerment related elements in all of the goals mm. mdg 3 itself was a limited goal focused on parliamentary mm. representation and education and education also in a partial way and that the conclusion was even those goals like maternal mortality etc they were not met okay. so what was the recommendation the recommendation was and it was agreed by all countries in india included that in the next generation of development goals called the sustainable development goals we must have a comprehensive and transformative approach that there should be a dedicated stand alone goal on gender equality mm. women's empowerment and women's rights and that also gender sensitive targets and indicators should be mainstreamed mm. in other sustainable development goals like food security and agriculture Very water nice. energy uh, health yeah. education etc so you mean to say we've traveled a little but how far do we have to go especially talking about india and talking about political empowerment uh, where do you think we stand i mean we are kind of making little little journeys each time uh, looking at this current parliament 61 women we have again a woman speaker here how would you look at it Well I think India has uh, progressed considerably uh but we have a huge huge challenge ahead uh whether it is uh poverty eradication women's poverty eradication mm -hmm. uh as I said there's uh, there is the enabler beneficiary relationship mm -hmm. there has been tremendous feminization of poverty mm -hmm. but also women are the way out of the poverty trap if we can empower them economically mm. that's the way out and that's where we really need to focus a number of our poverty reduction strategies and and uh, social protection programs that's one part the other part that we must look for is empowering women in the political sphere that you have referred to mm. again india has made a tremendous gain in through the uh, the uh panchayat and and jila parishad level uh, women's representation and now there are there is even parity in many states. states like rajasthan and in fact un women is working in five of the states with uh, programs to build the capacity leadership capacity of women uh, counselors so that they can play their true leadership role mm. and and uh, you know the voice participation and leadership really leads to mm. positive outcomes for themselves and their communities but what are the patterns you finding ma'am there that why do you think uh, despite so much being done yes. uh, to encourage them a lot of voices are not being heard absolutely that will always be the case but you know please realize this is the biggest grassroots women's democracy in the world 1 and 1/2 million village councillors and with each generation of these councillors you are reaching a new level of capacity of enlightenment mm -hmm. and of change you know making the change in the in the uh, both in governance mm -hmm. but also in the society around them because they are being seen as new role models mm -hmm. you know one of the panchayat uh, uh, sarpanches that uh, women sarpanches that we have worked with she spoke at one of our uh, seminars and she was very inspirational she said the first time i came in with a quota 
The second time I contested elections and came in and the third time I've just come in and I've defeated 15 men. <laughs> That's of huge which, success. Of which most withdrew except three in the end. Uh, who contested me. So, you know, that's the kind of progression that has been possible and it's no longer, you know, being the, uh, the, 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 the thumb, you know, being the yeah. thumb, um, the signature, the, the formal, power, holders, the signature yeah. power holders. So that's the change that is happening, but not enough, you're right. Women's we reservation still, bill, for example. And the next thing, as I was going to say on voice participation, leadership and where now we have to make that big leap as the world's largest democracy is to have the women's reservation bill passed after all these years. And I think the opportunity is very much there. We are very um, uh, satisfied that the government has you prioritized think there's a, there's it. there's a momentum which is absolutely, more now? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I, you know, I had the pleasure of meeting uh, uh, Sushma Swarajji. And, um, you know, she has been yeah, one of the yeah, pioneers of true. this and strong supporters of this. And also Prime Minister Modi himself has prioritized this. So we very much hope mm. that uh, this, uh, this will be the historic uh, moment when the uh, Lok Sabha <laughs> will be passing this bill. Yeah, we're all looking forward to it. Yes. Talking about political empowerment, we've talked about uh, economic empowerment, which is again something that we must look at. And we just had the budget uh, here presented. Uh, how would you look at the economic empowerment still not really, uh, you know, happening uh, as much as it should have with women here? Absolutely. I think um, there is a very strong linkage between education, women and girls' education, the emphasis that the government is now also putting on skills development. You know, this beti bachao, beti padhao is one part of it. It's very, very important part of it. And then taking the padhao part to another level of quality education, skills development, mm. and training mm. of women. So the value chain to decent work, mm and economic empowerment is truly built. Mm -hmm. So are you very optimistic way? and hopeful, so, but maybe we're not talking about areas of, uh, with darker shades, I would say. For example, things happening in Northeast, some of the voices not really uh, reaching the right spaces. Uh, uh, still a lot of women, you know, being, uh, you know, subjected to so much, as you're saying, violence and discrimination. So the other darker side of it, though symbolically we have women leaders, women CEOs, and all yes. these empowered women coming. Yes. So this huge gap again. Absolutely. And that's part of the larger inequality that we see around the world. But also in India, it's very deep. It, and, and there are multiple levels and layers of discrimination mm -hmm. that women face. You've mentioned uh, the regional, yeah. the remoteness issue, the rural women versus urban women. Exactly. Uh, the whole issue of urban slums versus yeah. uh, middle class women. You know, so I mean, there is there is all of all that, these patterns and layers all these are intersectionality into. as we call them. Then there is the caste issue. So you know, the caste-based violence as well against women. So all of those issues need to be addressed in a very very uh, focused and targeted way. And um, as I said, whether it is economic empowerment, whether it is ending violence against women, whether it is political voice participation and leadership. Everything needs to come together mm -hmm. and addressed in a holistic way. You cannot address women's safety unless you address economic empowerment or education and and all of the other. And, so and all these uh, steps are being taken, of course, but leadership. I think there are still some psychological and social issues which we'll uh, talk to you about in the next segment. We're taking another very short break, but don't go away. You're watching The Quest. Welcome back to the show. You're watching The Quest and we are talking to Ms. Lakshmi Puri right now. You know, talking about India and how politicians deal with very, very sensitive issues regarding women. We had had some disturbing voices coming in and uh, they were played out uh, in the media. But somehow we fail to understand why this is happening. I mean, how would you share your thoughts on it? I think uh, it is indeed a matter of deep concern when... Um, those who are involved in governance, 
whether it is in the legislature, whether it is in the executive or the judiciary, mm. when they do not fully understand and, and comprehend the context and the objectives of the gender equality and women's empowerment agenda and project. Mm. And that's the big um, effort we need to make in most countries, but here in India, as it has come out in the context of the violence issue of, of women, um, we had some utterances. very prominent leaders making such statements, which, which unacceptable have statements, absolutely, and and this is what brings out the fact that we should not look at the issue of violence against women in an isolated context, but frame it mm -hmm. in the larger issue mm -hmm. of women's human rights, mm -hmm. women's equality. And, where and, do you think, and also yeah. their empowerment. Where do you, you know, think Shashaktikaran, Samman, Suraksha, these are all... where do you think we are failing here in terms of every time there are new patterns being read into? For example, whether mobile phones are uh, the, you know, elements which are creating all this, whether this pattern is creating all this, this honor killing also something that I would you like see, to take... see, first of all, we do need a mindset change. You know, in, in UN Women globally, is looking at this as a project to end patriarchy, which structurally results in an unequal distribution of power, of labor, of role and responsibilities, you know, which, which is structural. And because of that structural inequality and discrimination against women and girls, the mindsets of people and stereotyping of, exactly. of women and girls' position and what they should do or they should not or whether they deserve this or whether they do not deserve, you know, all of that comes up because of that. So we have to deconstruct that patriarchal mindset mm -hmm. and establish and then replace it with a mindset which is uh, gender equal long way to go ma'am but uh, really reminded of you know uh, all these uh, debates are happening so we now know, but but we are if i may just say this we are doing a huge campaign around the world on the occasion of the beijing platform for actions 20 years and in that context we are doing a big global event in india in november called men and boys for equality because the role of men and boys of any uh, background, whether it is politicians, whether it's in the corporate sector, whether it is students, everybody must play their role in the gender equality project. And as a so we hope India will be a leader in that. Mm -hmm. And we hope everyone come joins together, yeah. and come together on that. Uh, you know, uh, CEO of Facebook, Sheryl Sandberg, was here. And she, one point, of course, apart from a book that she's written and so many issues she's tackled, talks about this whole bossy image that women have when they're in top positions. How would you look at it? What's your take on it? That, you know, when uh, th there, are, there are these stereotypical images uh, or expectations from women. Uh, so when they take decisions and they are in positions of power, they are suddenly being seen as bossy. Uh, very aggressive, something which should not be there, this Sushil word which comes in, which is makes them not Sushil. So <laughs> how do you look at it? That is part of the stereotyping that we uh, women have to overcome and, uh, you know, resist at all cost. Because uh, as you rightly said, if men are aggressive, it's supposed to be their natural role. Mm. There's nothing natural about aggression in men or women. It depends on the situation and there has to be a balanced, a balanced personality is what we should seek to cultivate and leadership qualities must be the same in men or women. What's been and your personal course, experience, ma'am? Please share with us. I mean, you had such a successful career and you've seen all kinds of shades of your career where you've risen to this position. Uh, some personal thoughts, I mean, something that you'd like to share with us, any anecdote or something, and how would you look at this whole journey for you as well? Well, this journey, I, I began as an, um, a foreign service officer in Tokyo and then uh, went on to join the UN uh, in... Um, 2012, uh, 22, 2002, I should say. Yeah. And uh, since then, I've been with the UN. And uh, at the founding of UN Women, I found myself mm -hmm. 
to be a, you know part of the leadership um, in in one of the most important institutions and projects for humanity as i said the the project for gender equality and women's empowerment but has it what been has tough been, it has been tough but also i must compliment uh, the you know the the indian milieu mm. for having fostered women professionals even as as early as the 1970s when i joined the foreign service and uh, it has been uh, a very enabling environment for women professionals but of course over the years whether it's in the un or elsewhere there are always challenges of gender stereotyping there are always challenges where as a woman you may face disadvantages but i think what is very important yeah. for and this is this is my message to all young women who are seeking uh, careers uh, including in diplomacy uh, and in the un that you have to uh, be totally professional yeah. in your approach and you have to shine with merit yeah. in whatever you do and you will prevail despite all uh, all efforts to the contrary based on gender discrimination or otherwise so i think it's a very important thing to keep faith in yourself keep faith in the fact that you are a woman uh, it's it's a, and that it's an advantage it's not a disadvantage thank you so much ma'am this is an issue that we really would have talked a lot on but right now thanks a lot for talking thank to us thank you very much sabati ma'am i much. wish you all the best in your thank own you. career and for all the women that you're working on thank you, thank you so much and that was miss lakshmi puri we were talking to so hope you liked this edition of the quest keep watching namaskar and bye bye